It's that time of year, time to smoke a turkey. And I can't tell you how many people have told me they don't even make turkey at Thanksgiving anymore because it's always dry. I'm gonna show you two simple steps today where you will get turkey that is moist and juicy every time on the smoker. Now the first step, always brine the turkey. Now let me take you back to yesterday when I started brining this turkey. I've got a stainless steel pot, two cups kosher salt. Now we have one cup of brown sugar, 25 cloves, and now I just want to mix this in and blend up or you know, dissolve the salt and the sugar. And we got our salt and our sugar all blended up. Now I've got uh, three oranges. I like to squeeze a little of the juice in. I don't guess you have to, but it just makes me feel better about getting it out. And we got all of our oranges in. Now the next step, I'm going to use some bourbon. Now look, this is totally optional. You don't want bourbon in your ticket, uh, 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 turkey. Don't pour bourbon in your turkey. Going for two cups. We've got two gallons of water here, two cups of bourbon. Now you can just give it a little stir if you'd like. Last thing I've got are some bay leaves, right? Now I usually use around two per gallon. There's no uh, one, two magic formula here. Three, four, five. We're gonna actually use five this time. And now I've got 11.7 pound turkey. Now on this brine, there's only one thing you really need to know one gallon of water to one cup of kosher salt to a half a cup of brown sugar. Keep that ratio. I don't care how big your turkey is, how big your pot is, your brine's going to turn out fine. You don't have to put the oranges and the bourbon and the cloves. You can get by with the water, sugar, and salt. And you can see for the size pot, you see when I, when I push it down, it's just perfect, right? So you can, some people will fill like fill this full of water to hold it down, and I'll, uh, but it looks like it's gonna keep it down in our uh, brine. Then I'll just simply put a lid on it. I'm going to move this entire pot to the refrigerator overnight. Now this turkey is brined for 24 hours. We're gonna take it out of the brine. I'm gonna show you how we'll prepare it. So we're just gonna get this lid off. And here's that uh, container. I just filled it with some water. It helps keep the turkey from floating up. But you can see it's uh, covered up here. We want to take this turkey out of the brine. And now I've just got a paper towel I'm going to uh, wipe the brine off. Now some folks, or wipe the excess brine off, some folks will take this in and rinse it off under the sink because they're worried they'll have excess salt I have never had that problem, and I've been making turkeys this way for years and years. Now is when you want to cut, you know, any excess skin or anything off to get your turkey ready. Now, I'm going to prep this chicken or this turkey today frog style. You don't have to do this, but it helps it to cook more consistently and actually a little bit quicker. You just want to cut down through here. And do the same thing on this side. I'll, I'm not left-handed, so I don't know how well I can show it from this side. Hopefully you could see it there. You'll see this little bone inside. Just cut right down on the back there. Just far enough where you see how you can start to manipulate the breast here. So we're going to turn it upside down. And then we're going to pop this breast out. And you may have to go in there and trim it a little bit more if you didn't trim it enough. Okay. And you push down like so. And you can start to see 
that looks like the shape of a frog. But what this does is it keeps your turkey more flat to the grill instead of part of it being real high and it'll just cook a little more smoothly. Now these tips, these tend to burn and uh, so I'll usually just cut them off right here. Now you see my wings are sticking up. You can just come in here, slice that down like so on each side and then you can even tuck them under if you want later, right? You want to get this pushed in kind of flat. If you've got any excess fat anywhere, now's the time to uh, cut it off, but we're pretty good. I mean, you might say there's a little piece right here. We can get rid of it. Now you can see our turkey up closer. Got our uh, back legs, front legs. There's the head of our uh, frog, our frog turkey. And what's the second key step? Injecting that turkey. Injecting puts like a, a butter flavor right into the meat. And as it smokes, you have all that liquid inside the turkey, ends up helping it be juicy every single time. You can make up your own injection. You can buy it in the grocery. I usually buy the cheapest one. I think this was uh, seven bucks. It comes with the needle, right? If you're only gonna do this once or twice a year, this is a simple way to do it. So what I usually do is get a bowl or a glass, pour some in here, that way you won't contaminate the rest of this, right? And then this is really simple. You just fill up this needle like so. And then you come in here in your, in your breast. Just, I usually start with the breast. I mean, you don't have to. And then you just start squeezing it in and you back the needle out as you go along so that you get the, you know, the injection all the way up in it. And you just want to do this. I, I like to do it about every inch. And you'll see the, the turkey plumping up. I don't know if you can see, I hope you can see that in the video. It's, there's the marinade so injection. So you just keep backing out. Little comes out like that, no issue whatsoever. Like I say, about every inch. The more you get in it, it'll help keep this turkey juicy. So I'll just keep doing this about every inch or so until when you start putting the injection in, it just runs out automatically. Now, some people won't inject these thighs, but because you know the thighs darker, it's a little juicier anyway. But if I have the marinade, I like to go ahead and inject everything. You see how it's starting to run out the holes when I inject? That's what I meant earlier. Keep injecting until, until it starts to run out automatically. That tells you it's full of injection there. Now I want to season this turkey. And for my binder, I'm just going to use this same injection that's, you know, rolled out or came out from underneath it. Just rub it all over the skin. You don't need to put an oil on here, um, to, to, you know, as a binder. This, this works just great. Now, I am going to turn it over because I want to season this side. All right. Oh, she looks pretty, don't she? <laughs> now, I like to use this Goblin Good turkey rub. I've been using it for years. You don't have to have this. You can season this guy with salt, pepper, garlic, and almost everyone has salt, pepper, garlic in their pantry. You could use an all-purpose barbecue rub, or if you want, there are hundreds if not thousands of recipes on the internet to make a homemade turkey rub. Now we'll just get it turned back over the other direction and finish seasoning this side. Let's get the lid up on this grill. Now I want to cook this turkey indirect. What I've got here is some hickory wood I cut. So we're just going to place this hickory on here. Put one over here for later. Get our plate setter in so that we avoid the direct heat. Now let me get that turkey. You can see, big turkey, small grill. But we will make it work. 
All right, gel fits on there. Now I just want to touch this up with the seasoning where I knocked it off. So we'll come back in here. You can see that hickory's already starting to smoke. Just touch it up a little bit. Not too bad. Now while that turkey's smoking, let's make a glaze. I've got one stick of butter I'm melting down. Here I've got some maple syrup. Now this is right around a cup. Could be a little more, but I mean, I'm not, we're talking like an ounce more, not much, right? So butter, maple syrup, and then I've got some more bourbon, right? We're gonna come in here. We're gonna try half a cup. Now be careful, right? If this pan is really hot and you start pouring alcohol in it, you can get a flame up. So be careful there. And then I've got that same Goblin Good turkey rub. You can use any kind of barbecue rub you want for this step. One teaspoon, what do you think? Two teaspoons roughly, maybe a tablespoon. Let's get that in there. Now the final thing I like to do, and you don't have to do this, I like to put a little cayenne, maybe a half a teaspoon. Doesn't take a lot. Like I said, it's optional. You don't want any spice, don't use that. What I'm going to do, as you can see, we've got some simmering going on here. Just simmer and stir now and then until this sauce thickens up a little bit. When you make a glaze of any kind, I recommend you give it a taste before you decide if it's ready or not. All right, I'm just going to stick my finger in this spoon. It's pretty yummy, but I think I'm going to put another half a cup of bourbon in there. And for those of you that don't want to cook with bourbon, you can use apple juice. But again, I think I would start with a half a cup to make sure you got it the way you want, all right? So we ended up with one cup of maple syrup, one cup of bourbon, one stick of butter, and then we had maybe, maybe a half a teaspoon of cayenne. Oh yeah, and I don't want to forget, we put that to two teaspoons to one tablespoon of our barbecue seasoning in there also. It's been two hours, two hours, 15 minutes. That turkey's up to around 158-ish. Depends on, you know, where you stick your temp probe. We're gonna hit it with that glaze. Just gonna put a light layer of that glaze on this turkey. You can see nothing too thick. I just wanna glaze this guy all up. When you're glazing this, you just kinda wanna dot it on or pat it on. You don't want to you know, get rid of your rub you got on there, right? Just a nice light glaze. And then that gives you kind of a good look at the collar on this turkey. Now we're going to get the lid down and let it keep cooking. Total cook time, two hours, 45 minutes. Get our lid up here. There she is. It's got that beautiful collar. Beautiful color on that turkey. Looks juicy. Can you see the juice in here? Just want to get our temp probe out. There's our frog turkey. Got a great looking color. You can just see juiciness on that skin. Here you can see, you can see the moisture. This turkey's gonna be delicious. So now let's try to figure out how to get this turkey out. without damaging anything. Now let's cut into this turkey and see if it's juicy. Just gonna cut a piece right off this breast here. Overlay it. See the juice on the board? Look here. Look at the juice in this turkey. Just hope, hope you can see that. There's our injection. Look at that, super, super juicy. And there, there's a close up where we just cut off. Can you see the juice in this turkey? I'm telling you, it's juicy on the outside, it's juicy on the inside. <laughs> That's a winner right there. Two simple steps. Brine it for 24 hours, then inject it. Now, it should go without saying, don't overcook it. You go to all that hard work and you overcook it, 
you're gonna get dry turkey. Hey, thanks so much for watching. You saw how easy it was to smoke this turkey and get a juicy one. I've got some more turkey videos right down below.